They are the species of special concern for 2019 just because we've talked, we're not sure, you know, how many counties that these are found in. Um, that's, that's one of the big things about Frog Week. What, do you, what are your thoughts on how we can kind of protect them within the state? Yeah. I mean, the biggest problem that the great tree frogs have been dealing with is just habitat destruction. That a lot of the forests that they really like to use for reproduction are being logged. They don't do well in urban areas for the most part. So the biggest thing there is just maintaining tracts of land that they can actually reproduce in. So places that have healthy populations, you want to try to protect that as much as you can. Uh, unfortunately, the land that is really good for great tree frogs is also really good for timber. So, <laughs> you know, you run into the problems of the economics of things versus protection of the species. Oh, yes he is. We got him. Don't slime on me now. It's worse than half of the venomous stuff around here. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know the difference at first, but I can see it now. Yep, and these guys don't really go anywhere near water. Do they go to water to breed? I, no, not to the... I don't think they do, no. Because this is a woodland salamander. So this is relative of the redbacks. As well as the whirlies and the ravine salamander. That has to be the largest woodland salamander I've seen in person. I think these are the largest. The whole complex, the 13 species of slimy salamander, they're the largest to the best of my knowledge. They must thrive in the cooler conditions of the northeast. It's interesting because this is the time where they're like crossing the road like crazy. I found like probably six of these guys today. One of them was like only as big as this part of the tail. It's hilarious, but what a nice looking specimen. Not too frisky either. Well, now he isn't. Yeah, I always like salamanders. I mean, do you think these guys are consumed by any frogs or toads out here? I mean, I don't know because these are pretty toxic. I mean, they're fairly toxic. The only thing I could think of that might try it would be the bullfrog. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, the bullfrog eats everything. The bullfrog and the green frog might have some type of a immune system. I mean, if they can eat the, the pickerel frog, there's no reason to believe they can't eat a salamander. Yeah, and especially the newts as well. Yeah, especially the bullfrog. But I don't think an American toad would try this. I mean, maybe, maybe a large female. Beautiful looking salamander. Absolutely. He's just looking around like, where am I? <laughs> These guys have big eyes too. Yeah, they're really cool. Well, if you want to set him down, yep. you can put him on his way. Oh, uh, he just has to jump. Now he's got something on his mouth. He does not want help. <laughs> he does not want help. All right, buddy. Well, stay safe Continue out here. Doing what you do. We're out here. We have found a spot where the gray tree frogs are. And uh, yeah, they are up in trees. <laughs> yeah. So we had Tyler try to go up there and he, he voluntarily decided to try to go up there and get it. And uh, it's laughing at us. It sounds like they're laughing at us from a distance. There's a whole bunch here, but it's only early. 
so we have a good bit of time maybe to find some but we might be able to find the gray tree frog tonight and bring it down to show you they're definitely here he's not gonna get out of my sight now here we are <laughs> this is a youngster this is a wild gray tree frog here this is the species of special concern for frog week we've been going all over the place we've gone to central pennsylvania we didn't hear him we were looking in our own backyard basically in parts of the western pennsylvania area and and those parts we didn't find them along the appalachian mountains so we're here a little bit further west and here we are the species of special concern. The reason why the gray tree frog is the species of special concern is because in a lot of areas these animals are either hunted as to be used as pets or in a lot of cases the trees that they hide in and they call from in breeding season which are giving Tyler fits right now. You need help? <laughs> um, He'll be down to join us, but yeah, the eastern gray tree frog, deforestation really affects them. This guy is, well, obviously a male, but this is a youngster because of how small it is. If you see Bane, one of my pets, he's probably about double or triple the size of this guy. He's not calling right now, he's just kind of trying to hope I don't eat him or anything like that. So, you all right? So some of the coolest things about this species, a lot of people think they're just another frog with the Cope's gray tree frog, but this is actually a whole separate species. The eastern gray tree frog has double the chromosomes that any frog in North America has. Also, if you, we can't show you right now, we're not gonna torture this animal, but in between its legs, it has a yellow, a yellowish type skin, and that signifies some type of a toxin that this species contains. Now it's not something that's going to harm your dog, but it probably is harmful to some snakes and some other amphibians. Now probably the bullfrog can eat them, and my guess would be so could the American toad if they really wanted. However, um, there's not too many amphibians that really try to consume these guys. For one, there are much larger tree frog species than most in the United States. And for two, the eastern gray tree frog is pretty hard to catch if it's 30 feet high in a tree. So the best time to try to get one of these guys, even for people, is down on the ground where they're trying to breed. So this guy here is really special. He's the only frog right now outside of my pets, Christian and Bane, we have documented. So it's truly special to see these guys. But one thing I will say for Frog Week is... Please do not try to buy these animals online because this guy here, let's say we're out somewhere in the middle of the woods, somebody finds them, this will be a quick buck for somebody. And I'm not saying it for somebody to go and do it. I'm saying that because this is their natural habitat. And if we continue taking these guys out of their natural habitat and then they lose it in the process, we're just screwing ourselves. We're really shooting ourselves in the foot because these guys will go extinct if this rate continues. The state of Pennsylvania, these guys are said to be abundant, but in a lot of places they're not found. So it's truly a species that we'd like to offer up of special concern. We've had to come to a special part in Pennsylvania to really document these guys where they're protected. So these guys won't be poached from here, um, hopefully. But the eastern gray tree frog, man. One really cool fact, the eastern gray tree frog and a study done in 2008 was found to have bred alongside American toads. The reason for this, the eastern gray tree frogs embryos have some type of a defense to different diseases that pond frogs and American toads can get. So a lot of times, especially only female American toads in the area that gray tree frogs occur as well, they will readily breed alongside gray tree frogs because it means more security for their their youngsters. So even though it's an unlikely situation to occur, American toads do breed next to gray tree frogs 
and the gray tree frogs unknowingly provide a service to them. So frogs and toads can be pals, but we're gonna see if we can find a little bit more here. But this is the Eastern gray tree frog. Here we are, gray tree frog number two. Look at how big this guy is, he's beautiful. Beautiful looking gray tree frog. It's really nice seeing these guys. I think right now what they're doing is they're coming down on the ground from the trees and they're starting to go to the water. That's exactly where they're gonna call for a mate. So this guy, we don't know where he's exactly heading to, but he is beautiful. And it's just truly incredible to see him. Now, Bane's actually comparing sizes here. Bane is slightly larger than this guy. He looks like he's gonna get ready to jump here in a second. But it's truly incredible just seeing them out. The one thing I would love to document is a female, but that's probably gonna be difficult to find tonight. But who knows, the night's still young, but oh, I'm a little shaky here. Look how beautiful this frog is. He's trying to blend in with the road. He's doing a decent job. If I wasn't holding a flashlight, I might have thought he was a rock. So this guy's pretty cool. Um, you want to help him move off the road, Tyler? Yep. So Tyler. A couple pictures of him. Oh, he's too. he's looking to see where he could go. Look at this guy. Check out how beautiful. What a beautiful animal. They have some of the most unique markings on them for a frog. And if you're trying to look for them for the first time in the area where they're not usually at, let me tell you, it sounds like when you find them, their coals are laughing at you. Well, this is a good one. He's, he's fit. This guy's been around the block. He must work out either at Planet Fitness or something. Yeah, got a full-time membership. <laughs> oh, look at those muscles. Oh, all right, we're gonna get off the road. He's going the wrong way. You want to take the camera and you want me to get him? Where are we? Where do you want to put him? I wanted to take him to where he was headed. Come right. here. Come here. Come here. No, come here. Come on. Stick to me. Talk to me, babe. Come on. No. No. We're taking you to a tree, buddy. I think if he jumps, I'll put him on this tree trunk here. We'll give him something nice. Here you are, buddy. It'd be lovely to photograph him here, but you know, I don't have a camera. Oh, now, now he doesn't want to get off. Look at, look at this guy. Beautiful markings. The Eastern Gray Tree Frog. It's really incredible seeing these guys out. You just don't find them a whole lot on the western side of Pennsylvania. Now, there could be some of you. You might say, hey, that's not true, Aaron. In my city, they're plentiful. They're like spring peepers. And if, if that's the case, then that is wonderful for you. But I, in my neighborhood, in my city, they don't live there. They've never been documented there. So it would be wonderful to see these guys more often. That's why we're trying to spread a little bit of awareness for them for Frog Week here. Beautiful frog. Let me get a front door of its face here. Go for it. He might try to jump, but... Hey, I mean, you know, this could be a funny picture. Oh, you... He's shy. I see how you are. <laughs> here, buddy. <laughs> Real, you're gonna be like that. He doesn't like you, Tyler. <laughs> he hates me. Maybe because I have a gray hoodie on, he thinks that he'll blend in with me. Because he know. keeps facing me. It's a, the shirt's a perfect See, look at that. Thing. He does keep facing me. I don't know, he likes me. What a beautiful frog, honestly. Well buddy, wherever you're going, I wish you luck. I hope that you survive and live a long life. Great tree frogs have a longer lifespan than a lot of other animals. Um, from what I believe, I think that they can live up to eight to 12 years in captivity. Um, I know that's in captivity, but they could also live longer if people actually would push, um, or maybe they're undocumented living longer. But I don't think that it's fair to say that they live about five or six years in the wild and die. I mean, there are exceptions, and this guy, who knows, you know? Maybe this guy will live for a decade. 
I mean, that's normal for toads. Female toads can live for a lot longer of a lifespan than a lot of pond frogs. So um, being outside of the pond frog family, a lot of these guys seem to have longer lifespans than um, a lot of the pond frogs. Can you, can you tell people to stop hunting your guys, your kind, so that way they can live peacefully in the wild? He's doing it in his own way, I promise. We are going to attempt to feed this guy. Let's see how tame we can get him. Please take it. If, you, if it falls off your hand in front of him. Oh, sorry, buddy. This is an ignomin wasp. Don't know the species, but beautiful specimen. That's it, that's it, let it go off. Really? <laughs> He's just like, I don't care. It's a beautiful one. I think man. breeding must be on his mind. I mean, we're offering this guy a snack. We put him in a safe spot away from the road. Then we offer him food. You gonna sting me? You look like you're about to sting me. Yeah. You've got to be kidding me. Please catch it. Well, Mr. Gray... We'll see you later. Mister.